If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Instagram. If you just want to say what up, if you want to tell me you love my videos, you can tell me that you hate my videos, but the best way to do that is on Instagram. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Shotty does a phone interview from prison, and Willie D says he wished Charles Barkley would have died instead of Kobe Bryant. Plus, Yo Gotti gets aggressive. Let's talk hip hop. I have five sons. I think about my kids, I think about my family before I make any move. You know what I mean? Not as much as I should have when I was in the streets, you know what I mean? But the people I, met, the people I did these things for, I consider my family as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. All right, Joe. So that was a little clip of an interview that Shoddy did uh, yesterday from prison, right? So this person that he did the interview with, I think like she's somebody that he knows personally, right? So instead of him going to like Rap Radar or Elliot Wilson or B Dodd or Najee or somebody like that, uh, man's them went to like his homegirl from Brooklyn, right? Um, which is cool because she kind of is like talking to him on a personal level, right? I mean, I guess like every couple of months he just kind of wants to check in with us and kind of just let us know what's going on with him right um so she of course asked him how he was doing um he said that he's doing great he used the word great right he's saying that you know he's really standing tall and he's still you know chilling and he's still repping Treyway. he's got everybody in there that he messes with he says that mel murder ish uh, and Crippy are his friends, his real friends, um, and he's still down for them, right? Um, which is cool. He said that Mel Murder got caught up in this and he ain't do nothing. Um, and that Crippy was just, you know, security. He got caught up in it too. Uh, he didn't do nothing either, but they held it down and it didn't tell on anybody, right? Um, which is crazy. So then, you know, she asked him, you know, about how his family is taking everything now that he's locked up, right? And basically he was explaining that, you know, is, people may look at him like he lost or something or that he fell right but he said that he didn't fall because he has a date to go home whether it's you know 15 years from now or not you know because he is going to file an appeal so whether it's 15 years from now or less um he still has a date to go home and that he's locked up in there with people with 60 years 70 years um and those people have no hope and they see like no end to any of this right um he said that you know, he has five kids, you know, uh, and that he never does anything without thinking about them first, right? But then he kind of said, but, you know, I do consider people in the street my family too, which is why I was going hard for them too, right? He says that he considers 6 9 a family member, which is why he went so hard for 6 9 It's not because um, of the money or anything like that. He did it off of just straight, you know, principle, helping out this young dude, right? Um, and then so she asked him, like, why did you think that 6 9 would hold it down and not snitch on y'all and not tell on y'all, right? Right. Um, and he says, because he never told on us, you know, before, you know, it's, it's, you know, when somebody is down and, you know, they don't get indicted and the police aren't around, you think that everything's all good. You don't know who's going to fold until they fold, basically. Right. Um, and so he was just basically talking about how he is going to file an appeal. She said, why are you filing an appeal? Right. He said, it's my constitutional right. I would be a fool not to explore that option. And even if he thinks that nothing will come from it, it's either one or two things could happen. They either say, no, you still have to stay in prison for the 15 years or they say yes. And they cut your time down. So either way, it's cool. Right. You might as well. He, he said you would be a fool not to appeal, basically. Right. Um, so, you know, the interview was very short. It was only like 10 minutes long. Uh, and Shadi basically said that he holds no ill will towards 6ix9ine or anything like that. And that he realizes that whether or not that they would have had 6ix9ine be down with Treyway, that all of them would have got locked up and went to prison anyway. Because CEO Chris, who is the real person who got arrested, um, I, you know, it was a whole thing that they were doing here, the NYPD. It was like operation, I don't know, whatever the case, the the term was, but they were investigating CEO Chris, which is a dude from the streets, right? He had an apartment in Manhattan. He also had an apartment in uh, Ridgewood in Queens, uh, where he used to keep a lot of his drugs from. And he used to import a lot of fentanyl and stuff like that to and from China, right? Um, this dude, CEO Chris, had uh, Mel Murder, who is the, you know, big homie of Treyway uh, as his clientele. And basically, I guess Mel Murder was, he was Mel Murder's plug. 
essentially, right? Um, and so he was actually working for the feds and set Mel Murder up. And when Mel Murder falls, since he's the, you know, the big homie in Treyway, everybody else is gonna fall too. All the top generals in Treyway, right? 6 9 being part of Treyway was just an added bonus for the NYPD that they didn't even expect because they already had Treyway under investigation before 6 9 even got down with them, right? That's why 6 9s car was wired and everything like that, and there were cameras in the car, and they saw when, you know, Harv and them robbed 6 9 because it, it, they were already under investigation. So even if 6 9 was to sit there and tell the judge or the prosecutor that, no, I don't know who robbed me, we have it on camera. And you said, yo, Harv, I'm sorry, I meant to call you, but you changed your phone number, right? So it was all that. So, you know, at the end of the day, Shotty was like, listen, I'm not mad at 6 9 We would have went down anyway because of CEO Chris, a dude that was really supposed to be a street dude. So y'all getting at me for accepting 6 9 into the gang or telling him about everything that we did or thinking that he would stand tall and not snitch really is irrelevant because we was gonna go to prison anyway, right? Um, but hey, at least Shadi is still doing good um, and he's standing tall, man. And I think like every probably five or six months, he's gonna come out and just kind of give us an update and let us know that he's still doing good, which is cool with me, man. Hold your head, yo. Um, let us know what you think about that in the comments. In the wake of the late, great Kobe Bryant dying tragically, suddenly, young, a lot of people are in pain all over the world. Some people are saying it feels like the loss of a family member. I agree. Kobe was a good dude. So much so that some people are questioning God. I got a question for God, too. Why Kobe? How come you didn't take Charles Barkley? No more talk. Alright, yo, this is crazy, right? So as you can see, uh, yesterday or Monday, Willie D went on live on Instagram and basically was like, everybody is sad about Kobe Bryant passing away. Everybody is sad about Kobe Bryant dying. Well, I'm sad too. But people always say not to question God, but I got a question for God. Why you didn't take Charles Barkley instead? And I was like, yeah, like really D is wild, right? Um, okay, so then a bunch of people flooded the comments and you know how it is, right? A lot of people were like, oh, this is horrible. Take this down. This is bad karma. I can't believe you would talk down on another black man um, you, for saying that they should take you. Why didn't they take you instead of Charles Barkley or uh, Kobe Bryant, you know? Um, and it's just getting crazy, right? But the whole situation, is the reason why Willie D he didn't just pull Charles Barkley's name out the hat or anything right the reason that Willie D even said that is because he is a, he's an OG man and he stands 10 toes on the ground and he got beef with uh, Charles Barkley anyway right and whether or not you know Charles Barkley dies in a helicopter crash or not he is going to still hate him even in his death right so Willie D ain't no punk he's not one of those people that's gonna be like oh I had beef with you but you died and now it's R.I.P. and I'm acting like we was best of friends. No, if I had beef with you and you die, then he's the type of nigga that probably talk down on you or piss on your grave or whatever the case may be. But I think that's cool because Willie D's keeping the same energy, right? Uh, thank God Charles Barkley didn't die though, right? So the whole thing is that like a while back, Willie D came out with a diss song against Charles Barkley called Coon, right? Um, and basically Willie D was dissing Charles Barkley on the song because he thinks that Charles Barkley um, kind of denounced his race or, you know, talks down on black people. Uh, the same thing that a lot of people had problems with OJ Simpson for, right? When OJ Simpson said, I'm not black, I'm OJ, right? So he doesn't even identify with being a black man in America because he feels like his suit superstar or his celebrity power is bigger than the color of his skin uh, until of course they locked his ass up uh, just like the nigga that he is right so this the same thing with Charles Barkley right a lot of times when athletes get a whole bunch of money they kind of forget where they come from so Willie D on the song uh, that he dissed Charles Barkley on it's called Coon right didn't come out yesterday or last week or anything this song came out a long time ago and I'm giving y'all a little context the reason why he said God you should have took Charles Barkley instead of Kobe Bryant right so on the song Coon he raps uh, 
Blacks been free since Lincoln was wasted, but some of these niggas still on the plantation. Listen up, Charles Barkley. You like scam, but I'm still calling you Darkly. The only reason why they put the mic on your face is so you could talk the dirt and talk down on your race. TNT made you big, put on a wig. Now you acting like you never had problems with pigs, right? Basically saying that now you're acting like you're not black. Now you're acting like you're just Charles Barkley, the basketball player, and not Charles Barkley, the black man first, and then the basketball player second, right? Um, and he is sad that they took Kobe Bryant because Kobe Bryant is a legend and he's cool, dope, and he always respected the culture and he's saying man god you should have took charles barkley instead of kobe bryant which is insane right um but you know i hear you really d let me know what y'all think about this in the comments i want to be intimate and i want to be the right people in the world i've been doing this a minute you know i mean everybody ain't heard i know each and one of y'all didn't contribute to me being in the position i am whether it's with me as an artist or whether it's with other artists i work with on, on, on the cmg so I just wanna have a good time, you know, of course the album come out this Friday, January 31st, but y'all get to hear it first, y'all get to ask the questions first, y'all get to dissect it first, and like they said, we ain't trying to keep it off the, you know, most people tell you, take your phones down, don't record, we tell you, do what you wanna do with this shit. Yeah. You know what, yeah. you know what I mean? So, do what you wanna do with it, y'all heard it first, I'm glad y'all heard, thank y'all, shout out to Epic Rock Nation, Puma, all right, yo, it's Wednesday, right? And yo Gotti is about to drop on Friday, right? And he's getting really aggressive. And I don't know what it is. Like, I see like a whole Yo Gotti rebrand, right? Keep in mind, Yo Gotti been in the game for 15 years, right? And to me, Yo Gotti is like the fat Joe of the South. No matter what, he always got a hit in the stash, right? He always got one that he'll pop out and pull out, right? Whether it's Pose, Pose with Meg Thee Stallion and um, Lil Uzi Vert, whether it's Five Star Chick with Trina and Gucci Mane and Nicki Minaj, whether it's uh, Put a Date on It with Lil Baby, um, <laughs> you know, I, countless songs, Men Lie, Women Lie, Numbers Don't with Lil Wayne, um, the Rack It Up, Rack It Up, Rack It Up with Nicki Minaj, like, uh, um, it go down in the DM, it go down. Like, yo, Gotti, I know, I know, with rich homie Quan, like uh, LeBron James, not LeBron James, the, the basketball player, but he has a song called LeBron James, right? Um, it's fire, like, yo, Gotti always pulls like a hit out of the stash, right? And I'm pretty sure that this album um, is going to be fire, right? Untrapped is what it's called. Uh, I listened to I Am, that was one of my favorite Yo Gotti albums. I Am too. that was another one of my favorite Yo Gotti albums. Like, he He's fire, and I really see him rebranding himself now that Rock Nation is his management, so you know he's down with Jay-Z, right? You know he's chilling with Meek Mill all the time. So now, it's almost like he stepped into like another level. Like, it's levels to this shit, right? And then Yo Gotti just stepped up another level with this whole like rollout and everything, right? He's walking around with suits on. He's at the Rock Nation brunch. I mean, where does Yo Gotti ever went up to Funk Flex and Freestyle? My, yo, Yo Gotti went up to Funk Flex on Hot Night and actually spit bars and murdered it, right? Not only that, but he rapped on the old East Coast Jay-Z beat, right? He rapped on the Takeover beat where Jay-Z was dissing Nas. Like, that's, first of all, paying homage to Hov. Secondly, letting us know that you could rock out on a beat like that because that shit is aggressive, you feel me? Like, Yo Gotti is really stepping into, like, his own and I just see him, like, growing and glowing, right? And this is so fire and all right before his album comes out right um i'm here for it man like i cannot wait i want to see like a yo Gotti interview maybe with like elliot wilson or something like that he's got money back yo up under him now right he's got black young stuff under him now right he's bringing young niggas out of memphis and making them millionaires right and it's freestyle and funk flex he said money ain't got no platinum black but he got platinum racks you know what i'm saying like it's crazy um I like it. I love it, right? Um, let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Follow me at Johnny Fastlane on Instagram, and y'all already know what to do. Peace.